And now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys, welcome to our news section. This week we have a lot of things to cover, as you can see. Uh, since PoneroCon happened, Porkfest, um, there's just a lot of things to discuss. And some things are very important to the future of Monero. So um, let's get into the news section. The first thing, let's look at some pictures from uh, MoneroCon. There's Doug and Sunita. Sunita, it looked like an amazing time uh, in Prague. Uh, then there's the Monero ATM made by digital.net, <laughs> which uh, looks very cool. Uh, the NIM project was MoneroCon as well. They gave, they gave a talk on anonymous credentials with threshold issuance. Um, then you could have had your uh, hoodie or whatever apparel you had spray paint painted by Monaruyo. Uh, the Luke Parker gave a talk on full chain membership proofs. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Um, but if you do want to have more nuance and more detailed take on full chain membership proofs, then you should definitely go and check out the dev section from this week because they're going to go into much more detail. But uh, essentially what it is, as far as I understand, is that they're going to get rid of uh, ring signatures and it's going to be a whole different system. Basically, Monero's privacy is going to be on steroids. It's going to be absolutely insane. And uh, Luke is the guy behind it. And um, yeah, so you should definitely check out his video and, uh, and listen to it. It is very, very um, specific, but uh, hopefully that you will understand as much as possible. Um, then they were talking about uh, transactions and how big they are, but Actually, Monero Seraphis transactions are now 45% smaller than they were talking about kilobits, uh, kilobytes and stuff like that. And Justin said that they took the trade off in 2017 to accept 10 kilobytes transactions to solidly hide the amount. And he definitely prefers five to 10, of course, but even 10 would probably be worth it. Um, but yeah, uh, very interesting, very technical. Um, go check out the dev section for more details on, on this. Uh, but then, such as the Monerotopia at MoneroCon, we have seen a lot, lot more transactions. So we had 42,470 Monero transactions that were made, um, but usually the average is like 20 to 25,000. So it just doubled MoneroCon and pork is happening at the same time. Um, they brought uh, this economic activity on, on Monero. And yeah, so as you can see on the graph, uh, MoneroTopia had a similar spike as well. MoneroCon is bigger probably because MoneroCon and Porkfest happening at the same time. Uh, but yeah, during those times, just people use Monero to purchase as many things as possible, hence uh, the spike. Then uh, another uh, um, post by Traceable about a telemission. So the telemission began uh, last year and Monero's inflation rate has decreased by 0.007%. And it's going to keep doing that until the sun eats the earth, as Untraceable says. Um, the current block reward is 0 0.6, of course, since uh, the tail emission. Um, and I think the annual, yeah, so the current annual inflation rate is 0.86%. Now, I think Bitcoin is 1.6% or something like that. So it's basically very, very low uh, levels of, of inflation. So it, Monero is beyond privacy. The more you learn about Monero, you discover that it's not just about privacy, it's about so many other things. It's it's fast, uh, the fees are low, the more it's used, the, the lower the fees. There's so many intricacies that, that comes with Monero. And of course, then you have the privacy, which is a huge, huge thing. Uh, but then let's talk about privacy coins in general, right? Because we talk about Monero, so let's, let's talk about different ones as well. Last week on, on uh, the news section, we discussed Binance, Binance uh, delisting some privacy coins, right? And some, I mean, you can't really say they're privacy coins, but um, yeah, but Binance reverses the decision about delisting the privacy coins in Europe, um, Italy, France, Spain, and Poland. Now, Monero is still going to remain uh, delisted, but he brought, they brought back um, a couple of them specifically. Um, let's see. Once. So Beam, XMR, Mob, Fire, and Zen are still included in the restrictions. Uh, but I'm basically the rest of them, like I think Zcash, it's basically back on, on, on the platform. And then a body from the price section uh, tweeted about it and he said, you know how MSM loudly proclaims lies, news, and then retracts it later? That's what CZ Binance did with EU privacy coins. To minimize the implied street cred of uh, signaling out Monero for the listing. So it's not just Monero, it's all privacy coins, right? But then he really lists fake privacy coins. 
And uh, I do believe that, um, that that can be true, you know, so that it doesn't look like he has something against uh, Monero specifically. Oh, it's just all prime sequence, right? But then um, he's putting the rest back, except Monero and a couple of other ones. Uh, but yeah, ZK, Zcash is back, for example. Um, yeah, so that's very interesting. So we discussed Binance a little bit and their decision and Kraken and the IRS um, ordering them to turn over its users' information. So if you're using Kraken, if you're using Binance, if you're using KuCoin, which is going to add KYC starting July 15th, um, you should probably look into different options and you shouldn't use central like exchanges at all. There's people that I keep telling them in, that are my friends and they keep using Coinbase, Voyager and all these things. And I keep telling them, stop using it. There's different alternatives, but they don't care. So, um, okay, then suffer the consequences of using centralized exchanges. But um, yeah, KuCoin is gonna introduce um, KYC and there's uh, different levels. Yeah, so the revised KYC verification levels and daily withdrawal limits are as follows. Finished registration, 20,000 USDT that you can withdraw. Provided basic personal information, 25,000, just a bit more. Provided photo ID and selfie, 30,000. Past facial recognition, so you're giving out your facial recognition to, to KuCoin, up to a million USDT. Um, so it's a choice if you want to use, use the centralized exchanges, but personally, I, I choose not to. Uh, now, Vic posted uh, a link to Monero Town, which is a basically a um, Monero community. You should definitely check it out. Just type Monero.town and uh, make an account and participate. It's very, um, very cool. It's like a Monero subreddit, but it has its own website. <laughs> um, then Robert F. Kennedy um, tweeted his position on Bitcoin. And he said that Bitcoin is not only a bulwark against totalitarianism and the manipulation of our money supply, it points the way towards a future in which our which government institutions are more transparent and um, democratic. Now, I wonder what his stance is on Monero, but given what he talks about with vaccines and what happened with COVID and Bitcoin, he could possibly be uh, pro Monero. And if he's not pro Monero, then that, that would be very, very concerning, but he's pro Bitcoin, which is a step in the right direction. Uh, now I'm not gonna mention this too much, but it's just interesting what's happening in the world. Um, basically, let's bring this one actually first. A Bill Gates company released billions of mosquitoes in Florida and Texas. Malaria now in Florida and Texas for the first time in 20 years. So this says uh, Bill Gates has a malaria vaccine almost ready. Um, then, um, yeah, of course, the malaria vaccine will also have immunity from liability if something goes wrong. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. The world, the world is crazy, but I just wanted to quickly mention that, uh, then France, um, France has riots again, uh, this time because, um, a 17 year old boy was shot by the police in Nanterre. So the whole country is in um, chaos right now. Then there's a video of a car driving into Lidl. Oh my God, it's insane. And there's the video. Um, yeah, for the people watching on, on Twitter and they can see the video. So it's basically a car driving into Lidl, like inside the building itself and just a lot of people going in and uh, looting it. So. It's absolute chaos, and it just shows that, um, I mean, France used to be the city of love, but now it's the city of hate. Um, so we'll see where France is going to be headed in the next couple of years. Um, then quick mention that Simple X, um, that uh, St. Matthew created a Monero group on Simple X. Simple X is like session, so it's private, anonymous, um, um, chatting platform. So if you want to join, then you can click on the link and join the Monero group. And then, of course, the, another week, another video of Biden doing something um, that a president should be more aware of. This time, he says that Putin is losing the war in Iraq. Um, now, he, he's been giving a lot of money to Ukraine because that's obviously where the war is happening. But this is very concerning. I don't know what is in his head, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but he's just 
Sorry, but if he, if he wins the next election, that's, I don't know how people can, can vote for him anymore. It doesn't mean that I like the other ones, but. It's just uh, my my two my two cents. He's not obviously fit to be a president. Um, now the digital pound will be pseudonymous with a focus on privacy. Uh, Bank of England CBDC chief says. Now with this, uh, they talk about ledgers and stuff like that. But what concerns us specifically is um, Newton also talked about the privacy aspect of the CBDC, claiming it, it would be focused on offering privacy to users and won't collect personal data. He said the bank would focus on providing the infrastructure while the private players would be responsible for the innovation. Okay. Uh, there will be no data shared with the Bank of England. We will know what transactions have happened, but we will have no data on the individual who did it. Uh, while the wallet provider would have the user data, okay, but won't have access to their transaction data. Mutant claimed the Bank of England Bank of England or the government wouldn't have access to any user data and even the wallet providers with limited access to that data will need consent from the users regarding what data they can store. Um, interesting. I'm not sure what to really think about it. If I had the choice between Monero and Digital Pound, I obviously would use Monero because just you're not going to have full privacy on, on the Digital Pound, on the Digital Dollar, on the Digital Euro. Euro. You're just not going to have full on privacy like you're going to have in Monero. And um, also, you don't know what they can implement in, in inside the currency. I mean, uh, they can tell you that you can purchase that thing. You know, you, you reach your meat quota for the week, so you can buy any more meat um, because of the environment and blah blah. Or you can get m more gas in your car because you've already gotten what you can in one week. Um, or negative interest rates, like you need to spend your money because it's just gonna disappear in front of your <laughs> front of your face to incentivize whatever so um this is very interesting if you do want um usually at the end of the uh the show you can hop on and discuss things about monero if, so if anything sparks your interest in the news section and you want to discuss it hop on the show and and uh, discuss it with um, other monero people but yeah this was this week's news section we had a lot a lot of things to cover and there's endless more things, but I can't um, fit them all. So I hope that you enjoyed the new section. Hope that you enjoy the articles. If you ever want to send me something, you can on Twitter. You can just tag me. You can uh, message me. And uh, you can tag Monerotopia if you want. And we'll cover it next time. But I hope that you're going to have a good week. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.